All right, Auburn captain Elijah McAllister joins us each week, courtesy of Crane Works. The big guy reminds you to check out that big dog for Crane Works and Rental Works. He's on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Welcome in, Elijah. How are you today? Doing well. How you doing? Doing great. Thank you. I know when you play for a traditional SEC program, you do not play for moral victories, and I'm not trying to give you one for Saturday. But I will say a lot of Auburn fans looked at that and said, when you play toe-to-toe with the number one team in the nation – in Hugh Freeze's first season, you feel really good about the way this team played. Did it feel the same in the locker room, even in a loss? Yeah, I mean, uh, like Coach talked about before the game, we he wanted us to fight, and we were going to fight for 60 minutes, and we felt good about you know doing that, and we felt like we did that for 60 minutes, and obviously the result wasn't what we wanted, but we felt like our play um, matched up for the most part what we wanted to do um, and, and how we wanted to represent ourselves in the university out there on that field and playing – in front of the best fans, uh, the result just wasn't, you know, didn't end up going our way. Uh, but it's something to build on, um, although it wasn't a win. Uh, so you saw this team last year when you were at Vanderbilt. And uh, I, I don't know, watching Georgia, they look a lot different. Uh, I mean, they, they got after you guys last year, 55 nothing. Different situation, different atmosphere, all that kind of stuff. Um, how different is this Georgia team in 23 to last year's national championship 22 team? I kind of think back to to the guys they had on that team and different things last year. Well, Stetson Bennett. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, that, that helped. Yeah, yeah. Stetson Bennett. Jalen Carter. Uh, Jalen Carter, which you didn't go against yeah, him, yeah. but I'm okay. sure you had to look at him and uh, think, my yeah, God. I mean, obviously, you know, they, they're they two time national champions and guys graduate and guys, you know, come in and, and get new roles and starting to, you know, still early part of the season, in my opinion. So they're still trying to get comfortable with who they are in their new roles. So, um, I, I think, you know, obviously they're different because they have different people, but I think for, as far as me feeling like I'm out there and playing different, I'm in, I'm in a place where, you know, I'm with uh, some talented guys and, and they, they make uh, my job a lot easier. So, um, yeah, they're, they're a lot different probably just be simply because of the, the guys transition. They had a lot of older guys last year on the team. They played a lot of ball and it was two-time national championship team. So. Has this defense gotten better since Cal? Uh, that was a great defensive effort out there in Berkeley, and now you challenged against Georgia. How has the defense gotten a little bit better if you think it has? Yeah, I mean, we continue to improve every single week. Uh, we've gotten better just continuing to play together and, you know, stopping the run is always our big focus. And honestly, truthfully, we feel like we can play better as a defense and uh, play better to help this team win. Uh, more games going on in the future. So we feel like we're playing well. We're playing at a, a good level. Uh, nonetheless, we know we can push um, our level to a higher standard so that we can help this team uh, win some ball games coming down the stretch. As you went back and watched the tape from that game, uh, Bowers being open there late for a few catches, um, w- was that anything that was alarming to you guys? Did he just find a zone? Um, the, how was that scheme? Just walk us through those few big plays late. Was that just a great effort by him? Talk, talk us, about, talk about those few plays late in that game. Yeah, I mean, uh, Coach uh, Roberts had a great plan for us to, you know, continue to uh, stop, you know, their top plays and their top guys, and that's what we kind of did throughout the whole game. Uh, I think, you know, obviously Brock Bowers is a great player, so he's going to make some plays throughout the course of the game. Uh, nonetheless, we had great plans and. It was something that we just didn't execute as a defense. And, and um, just as we got, you know, to the fourth quarter, we didn't execute at a higher level like we did throughout the earlier part of the game. Uh, so it was nothing that, you know, we don't know that we can fix. And it's something that's fixable that we can go in next week. Uh, obviously not this week, but next week uh, moving forward. But obviously, you know, Brock Brown's a great player. So he's going to make some plays. And then Coach Roberts had us set up in the right things. We just didn't execute uh, coming down the stretch. This is admittedly going to be a strange question, and we've asked you some strange ones, so I will uh, I will warn you first. Elijah McAllister is with us, and he comes to us each week courtesy of Crane Works. The big guy says, don't forget to check out that big dog for Crane Works and Rental Works. If God designed a player specifically to be able to successfully guard Brock Bowers, can you give me what that player looks like? I need like his size, his weight, what he runs the forty in, you know, his oh, build. Yeah. Can you give me that guy? I'd say he'd have to be uh between six one and six three, somewhere around there, about two twenty, long arm guy that can run. Can I give you uh, Ed can I give you Ed Reed? Will what that was, work? What was Ed Reed's height? Was he I think he was about six one, six two. All right. Yeah, every yeah, every probably would be able to cover anybody. I think to ever play football, but um, he'd have to be a really long arm guy and have to have some great athleticism, but also be like physical. He had to be a tough dude, probably from 
somewhere down south. Um, to, 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 <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> but like a 4-6, I mean, he probably needs to run a 4-6, four, 4-5. Four, yeah, Am I sure, right about that? Sure. Yeah. Cause, yeah, because he, he's, he's rolling. Like, I mean, he's you, know, you see it on tape, he's rolling. Like, he can run for real, honestly. Yeah. Hey, after two physical battles against A&M and Georgia, you guys get a well-deserved um, bye week here before you guys head down to the bayou to take on LSU. On a bye week, what do you typically do? Do you lay around in pajamas and watch football all day? Like, we, the three of us don't get off our couches. I mean, we watch from 11 a.m. till last game goes off, whether it's 1 or 2 in the morning. What will you do this weekend? Yeah, uh, so as far as practice, it's really, like, technique-based. So, like, it's coming down to the simple technique-based. Uh, not a lot of, you know, team reps to really try to get the young guys acclimated to, uh, you know, getting more reps so they get prepared to help us out throughout the stretch of the season and then, Outside of the facility, I'm honestly just icing up and making sure my body's right and getting off my feet because I'm an older guy. So I know I need the the rest to continue to, you know, be prepared for uh, this next, you know, back half stretch of the season. So it's really just getting off my feet, you know, uh, just chilling with my friends, probably playing a video game, um, watching some games, obviously, on Saturday and Sunday because I'll actually be able to watch it because we don't have one. So Uh, you're an older guy. How old are you? Twenty three. Twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, do you, do older, you use, older than what? Do you use Icy Hot like me? I mean, <laughs> me and Shaq, yeah, we yeah. use that Icy Hot. Do you use that too, uh, like us older guys? 100%. Yeah, yeah. We, we got we got a couple, you know, you know, fifth, six year guys in our team. We kind of got this little little group of going, you know, right before practice. We make sure the Icy Hot's on our knees and our ankles and make sure we're ready so we can have the best practice possible. Because without it, I don't know what we would be able to do. Do you, yeah. do you find yourself ready for dinner at five o'clock like me? I mean, at five o'clock, you're ready to eat? Yeah, yeah, and it's funny because some of the young guys are like, "Man, I, I'll just go get some McDonald's at ten, eleven p.m." I'm like, "Man, I'm, I'm probably asleep by then, honestly." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, do you call it the Facebook and Tiki Talk? Do you like 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 I do? <laughs> it's, uh, it's obviously funny that you guys say this because I I like try to keep up with the different songs and different things that the younger guys on the team have, and like I. I try my hardest, but I don't know. I tell them like, "Can you make a TikTok for me? Can you help me do this on Instagram?" Like, I, well, this oh. is this is probably the wrong question to ask next. Then Laura wants to know if you'll go to the Auburn Rodeo. It is this weekend, famous concert down there. Yeah, I heard about it. Um, I'm still trying to figure out which, how many of my teammates are going, and I guess I'll try to try to you know tag along with a couple of them. But I definitely have heard about it. It's it should, it's a fun event, and it's actually happy that it lands on our bye week so that you know some guys can go enjoy it. I'm I'm unsure yet. I got to see what. How many of my teammates are going to see yeah. if we can get out there? Zach so Bryan. Zach, Zach Bryan is one of my favorite artists. He's headlining it. And uh, I was going to sneak in. And then some friends of mine who are in school there said, uh, Jim, you'll be the oldest person in the pasture. By so, 15 years, yeah, maybe? Don't yes. go. Like Sometimes you can just blend in at concerts and stuff. I'm told <laughs> rodeo is not that. Yeah, he, not that. It's funny, you know, we don't have no any rodeos in New Jersey, so it would be my first, or really like anything like that in New Jersey, so it would be my first kind of concert, kind of deal like that, and it would be good. Uh, he keeps talking about old. Do you know who the oldest player in college football is right now? I think this is right. I could be wrong with transfer portal and COVID yeah. years and everything. you have any idea? Just guess an age. I have no idea. I, I, probably somebody who played baseball before and came back, maybe like, probably like 32, 33. 34 years old. Virginia's got a kicker. Oh, man. How's he doing? You know, he's, he's kicking well. <laughs> well, Virginia doesn't score. Uh, yeah, they don't score. <laughs> they don't win, so it doesn't matter. He hasn't been used yet. <laughs> but, but he did go serve in our military, so it's a cool story. But, I mean, 34 years old, back on campus, man. That, that would be uh, interesting. A lot different. Though. A lot different. He still has the tags on him. They can return him if they don't use him by the midseason. <laughs> yeah, I was going to see if he even registers in field goals. Yeah, he does. Uh, he does. Virginia, he is Will Betridge. Is that no, the guy? it's uh, Matt Gaynard. Then he's the backup. He's not even a starter at that age. He's the backup. Well, their starter is uh, five of six field goals. He's the best player on the team. Best player on the team right now for them. <laughs> uh, uh, Elijah, get some good rest this weekend. We appreciate the time. We'll talk to you next week as you get ready for LSU. Thank you, my man. Thank you very much. Appreciate y'all. All right, buddy. Thank you. Uh, Elijah McAllister. Always fun talking to him each week with us, courtesy of Crane Works. The big guy there. He and Tyler Booker both say, check out the big dog for Crane Works and Rental Works. Like all our guests, he's on the Johnston RVCenter.com hotline.